What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to another episode of iOS Weekly. Today, we're gonna be talking about iOS 17 features that Apple leaked themselves, the new iOS 16.5 update and why it's worth paying attention to, how Apple might actually be challenging OpenAI and ChatGPT, some important app updates, and much more. And as always, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode, and also so you don't miss out on anything going on in the world of Apple. All right, so first up, iOS 17. So we are just a few weeks away from seeing iOS 17 unveiled at the Worldwide Developers Conference, and just this past week, Apple gave us a pre preview of some new features that will be included in the software. Now these are all accessibility features, so they're not gonna apply to everybody, but at the end of this segment, we're gonna talk about a new iOS 17 feature that's going to affect everybody, and hint, it's about the control center. So anyways, back to this press release from Apple. The first thing they mention is personal voice, and this is incredible because this is going to use AI and machine learning to clone your voice in just 15 minutes. So it says, that users can create a personal voice by reading along with a randomized set of text prompts to record 15 minutes of audio on the iPhone. And then that speech accessibility feature is going to use on-device machine learning to integrate seamlessly with live speech so that users can speak with their personal voice when talking with others. And this is huge for those at risk of losing their ability to speak. And then live speech is another feature that I just mentioned. And it says users can type what they want to say to have have it be spoken out loud during phone and FaceTime calls, as well as in-person conversations. You can also save commonly used phrases to chime in quickly during conversation. And this is going to be extremely useful for those who are unable to speak or who have lost their speech over time. Assistive access is another accessibility feature for those with cognitive disabilities. And this is going to allow you to choose between a more visual grid-based layout for the home screen or a row-based layout if you prefer text. And then there is detection mode and magnifier, which is great for users who are blind or low vision. Point and speak is going to be a new feature that makes it easier for users with vision disabilities to interact with physical objects that have several text labels. For example, while using a household appliance like a microwave, point and speak combines input from the camera, the LiDAR scanner, and on-device machine learning to announce the text on each button as the user moves their finger across the keypad. And then Apple also mentions several other accessibility features at the bottom of this press release, which is pretty awesome. I mean, Apple is really putting a big emphasis on accessibility. They have for the past few years, but it seems like with iOS 17, they're just taking that to a whole nother level, which is awesome to see. So now let's talk about the other iOS 17 feature that I think you guys are going to find it pretty interesting, and it has to do with the control center. So I was listening to a Twitter spaces with Mark Gurman from Bloomberg a few days ago, and somebody asked, somebody called in and asked him if he's heard about any changes coming to the control center with iOS 17. And of course, he did not give a yes or no answer, but he did kind of hint at the fact that a control center change is coming with iOS 17. He said something along the lines of how we had, you know, widgets, and then we had the lock screen, and you can kind of guess what the future of iOS is going to be. And he kind of, you know, hinted at the fact that we are going to see a control center change in iOS 17. Now, if that's a redesign, or if it's just, you know, one little button change, we don't know yet. Of course, obviously, we won't know until Apple officially announces it at WWDC on June 5th. But I wanted to mention that because it seems like, you know, multiple people now have talked about how we're going to have a change in the control center, which we've needed for quite a while now. So I'm pretty excited about that. And for whatever reason, this past week just seemed like a press release week for Apple. They released so many press releases. And one of the other ones was showing how serious they take security in the App Store. So they say in 2022, they stopped more than $2 billion in fraudulent transactions. They blocked more than 147 million fraudulent reviews. They rejected 1.7 million app submissions and they deactivated 428,000 fraudulent developer accounts. And there's a lot of other details on here as well about you know what they've kind of done in terms of security for the App Store. And it's pretty impressive, honestly, especially when you look at something like the Play Store, where it's kind of just a free for all. So it's going to be really interesting to see you know how these numbers fare in the next you know three or four years after sideloading really gets popular on the iPhone. Now we know that with iOS 17, sideloading is most likely coming to the EU first. And it's not going to be in the US at all. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how third party app stores kind of affect 
the kind of war on app stores in terms of fraudulent transactions and you know fake reviews and things like that. Also this week, Apple announced new music related features that were added to your iPhone server side, meaning you don't need to update the software. And the first one is set lists. So this is where you can see when your favorite artists are going on tour and the list of tour dates. Now, I don't know why this is not easier to access. Like, I don't know why it's not on the artist page, at least for now, you have to like go to browse and then go to that section and then scroll down and see who's in there. So I hope they add to this in the future. And then we also have more than 40 guides and maps. So I use guides quite a bit actually in the maps application. And these new guides will highlight the best music venues for live music. Now we also saw the official WWDC 2023 schedule get announced. And while on the surface, it doesn't really seem exciting or show anything new, there actually is something noteworthy here. So you can see the keynote starts at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern as usual. Then you have your typical happenings like your lunch, your state of the union, meet the teams and things like that. But what's interesting here is this tidbit, which was mentioned by Paul Hudson. On the schedule is a special evening activity you quote, won't want to miss. Plus, there's a smaller event at the Apple Developer Center on Tuesday to quote, discuss some of the latest announcements. So once again, another clue that the Apple headset is most likely coming at the Worldwide Developers Conference. So after nearly two months of beta testing, Apple finally released iOS 16.5 this past week. And while it wasn't really a major update in terms of new features and changes, like we got this new wallpaper here with this really cool animation, which I've already showed, we got a few new changes inside of the news app application like this sports tab down at the bottom, along with the following tab over there, which combines the search and the following into one. But aside from that, we also got quite a few security patches. And some of these are quite concerning. So iOS 16.5 patches 39 security vulnerabilities three of which were being actively exploited. Now, keep in mind, two of the three security vulnerabilities that were being actively exploited, the WebKit bugs, were patched in the 16.4.1 Rapid Security Response Update, but one of them was not. Now, there are several other bugs that have been mentioned here, other vulnerabilities that have been mentioned here, but one that caught my eye is this one for Siri, and it says, a person with physical access to a device may be able to view contact information from the lock screen. Now, of course, the likelihood of that happening to you is very, very slim, if none, but still, it's worth noting that there are quite a few security vulnerabilities that exist pre iOS 16.5. So if you haven't already updated, if you're looking for a reason to update, I think that is your reason to update right there. But if that's not reason enough for you to update, I will say that the performance and the battery life are also doing tremendous here on 16.5. I've also been reading your guys' comments on my 16.5 What's New video, which by the way, if you haven't seen that, it's up in the cards. But a lot of you guys are also saying that the performance and the battery life is great, and it's the best that you've seen on iOS 16 yet. So it seems like my experience is kind of in line with what you guys are experiencing as well, which is always good to see. And then yesterday we saw the state of Georgia become the fourth state in the United States to support Apple's digital ID feature, where you can store your driver's license inside of the wallet application. So I have my wallet app pulled up right here. We're gonna tap on the plus, and we're going to go to driver's license or state ID. And now you can see that Georgia has been added to the state list alongside Arizona, Colorado, and Maryland. And if we go ahead and tap on Georgia, it says securely present your identity with your iPhone or Apple Watch. You can see the Georgia peach there. Now, keep in mind, this is only intended to be used at TSA checkpoints and the airport. Like you can't use this if you get pulled over, you can't use this to get into a bar. It's strictly for select TSA checkpoints in the airport. And speaking of driving, Apple Maps just rolled out its EV trip planner for the Porsche Taycan. And this is only the second car to get support for this. The the Mustang Mach-E was first last year, and this feature allows for EV routing in the native Apple Maps application. And this also just kind of confirms that Porsche will be sticking with Apple CarPlay in their future cars, and they're not going to be pulling a GM where they opt out of CarPlay and you know start to develop their own software. So that's good news if you have a Porsche or if you're looking at a Porsche in the future. And I did also want to briefly mention a few things for my international audience. So first, First off, Apple Pay is now available in Panama and the Honduras. 
And also the Apple Store has now officially launched in Vietnam. All right, so now let's move on to some important app updates from this past week. Okay, so let's start with TikTok because you've probably seen the news by now, but Montana has become the first official state to ban TikTok. So this is going to prohibit users from downloading TikTok starting in 2024. And this bill includes a $10,000 fine per violation. Now the user is not going to get fined. ByteDance, the company the, that owns TikTok, is going to get fined $10,000 per app violation. And we'll have to see how this shakes out over the coming months because this just seems excessive to me. Like I, I just cannot see this actually happening in 2024. Like, yes, it got passed. Yes, Montana is officially the first state to ban TikTok, but I honestly cannot see this actually going into effect in 2024. I think there's gonna be some type of veto or something, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think TikTok's actually gonna get banned? Do you want it to get banned? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. Now let's move on to another application that is already banned, at least for Apple employees. We'll talk about that in a minute, but ChatGPT. OpenAI just officially launched the ChatGPT application on the iPhone, and the reason it's so delayed, the reason we're just now getting this, is a reason we'll touch on here in a minute. But first, let's talk about the actual application itself because I was not expecting much from this. I did not think it was gonna be a very good application, but it's actually amazing and I love it. And I will probably do a separate video on this, but you can see up top, you can choose between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. You can see up there, you have the three dots for your history. You also have settings where you can see your subscription, your data controls, you have haptic feedback. So every time you type in something and you get a response, you get haptic feedback for that generated response. You also have this little, you know, these little waveforms right here, which will allow you to do text to speech or speech to text, I should say. And this uses Whisper. This doesn't use the on device, you know, listening. This doesn't use your dictation down here. This actually uses Whisper, which is also from OpenAI. So, so far, I'm actually really loving the application. There's even a little widget on the lock screen you can use for it. So, I don't know. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's a great and easy way to access ChatGPT without having to go into Safari or using some type of other third party application. And keep in mind, this is only available in the United States, at least for now. Okay, so let's go back to what I was just saying because you might be confused. Why has Apple banned ChatGPT? Well, let's take a look at the latest Wall Street Journal report, which shows that Apple has restricted the use of ChatGPT and other external AI tools for its employees as Apple develops similar technology. This report also says that Apple was concerned about the leak of confidential data by employees who use the AI programs and has also advised its employees not to use Microsoft-owned GitHub's Copilot used to automate the writing of software code. So it looks like Apple has banned employees from using ChatGPT or other AI tools because of privacy reasons. Obviously there was a data leak a while back in ChatGPT, but also because they are working on a competitor to ChatGPT. So it looks like Apple is actually working on a generative AI tour, an AI model, which is really exciting. But my big question is, is Apple going to implement this into Siri or is this going to be a whole new thing, maybe with a whole nother name? So I don't know, that's kind of where we're gonna have to see what Apple does with this because I can see them ditching Siri because obviously the engineers on the back end just are not a fan of Siri in general. So I can see them going somewhere else, but also Siri is such a household name now and it's so baked into iOS already, it kind of wouldn't make sense to do something else. So. I don't know, we may get some answers come WWDC on June 5th, and I'm pretty excited to see what's next for Apple in the world of AI, especially generative AI, because Apple's always had great AI and machine learning, but they've never had any type of generative AI like ChatGPT. But this could be the signs that it's on the way. My favorite weather application, Carrot, just got a new update, and you can see here version 5.11 adds multiple new features. So first off, we have a new data source. So Open Weather is a new data source along with other regional weather providers. We have improved rain alerts, improved location alerts, redesigned time machine. You have a new smart layout, new content, and also more changes down here like push notifications, precipitation notifications now use absolute instead of relative times. You know, there's the added location widget on the lock screen, just a lot 
of changes here in version 5.11. So if you use Carrot, you will be pleased to know that this update is pretty major. Now, some of these do require Ultra, and luckily they do tell you which features require Ultra, as you can see right there. But I think Carrot is amazing. It's my favorite weather application and definitely worth the money. And if you are an Adobe user, they just launched support for pass keys. So you can now use pass keys instead of a password to log in to your Adobe accounts. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest in the world of Apple. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss my future videos on iOS 17 and of course, future episodes just like this one. And if you haven't already subscribed to my free Apple Den newsletter, that is also linked down in the description below if you prefer to see you know written content in your inbox every Friday morning. But anyways, thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.